Good day everybody and welcome back to DX Explorer for one more video. Um, some while ago I had in mind that I will build a PTT call with an LM386 audio amplifier incorporated into the whole schematic just because it was very annoying uh, that I always had to use an external audio amplifier to, to listen to it. Um, I couldn't find the, <laughs> the phone um, speaker that uh, Miguel recommended for the PTT code that he built and uh, yeah I had this idea in mind for quite some time but recently one of the subscribers to the channel uh, to the channel Jesus he, mo he had to build a, a school project um, and he asked for a little help if uh, if I could help him to to find the design um, basically he had to build a serial, very very simple CW transceiver for the 160 meters band. So um, I thought this is a good time to test uh, this idea and it worked fantastic all we had to do um, from the way it is right now. We just replaced the crystal for a 160 meters band crystal and the inductor. It was a 100 microhenry inductor and it worked perfectly. And of course the um, I, we didn't put a, a low pass filter on the output uh, just because it was uh, just a test for school but you will definitely need a low, uh, low pass filter on the output and actually for the 160 meters band and even this one I would recommend the band pass filter instead but I just wanted to stick to the original design and actually I uh, built like a very very simple Pi Network uh, low pass filter um, just as um, as it is in the pixie uh, transceivers um, thanks to that i actually still get a little bit of m broadcast man breakthrough so uh, yeah it's it's a little annoying but it's not as um, as loud as it used to be uh, in my previous builds that uh, that i tried at the beginning so uh, yeah it's acceptable i mean when propagation is good the cw signals are so loud you actually don't um, the, the AM broadcast band interferences uh, don't seem to bother so much but if you live close to a, to a station and it's too loud you can always uh, transform this uh, um, low pass filter into a band pass filter basically you have what is this one I think it's I forgot C5 C5 you will remove it it's a 150 um, picofarads capacitor uh, you will remove this one from here and all you have to do on the back it's uh, you will uh, cut the trace over here and just solder a 470 picofarads capacitor here on the back and uh, that will transform the simple Pi Network low pass filter into some sort of Pi Network band pass filter <laughs> it acts like, like a band pass filter even though I don't think it is but um, it's pretty effective and it does seem to remove the M broadcast band interferences a lot. Uh, you, you can barely hear anything, at least on the 40 meters band. I didn't test it on 160 meters yet. But I think I'm, I will do that too if the interferences keep coming and I can't get rid of them. So, um, yeah, I might, I might modify the PCB board so you have an option to build any of them. Uh, the only problem with the bandpass filter is that you lose a little bit more power on the output so that's the reason I opted for a, for a low pass filter instead other than that there's nothing to, to say about it um, maybe I'm going to talk a little bit later uh, more but right now let's just uh, hear it I recorded a little bit uh, last night on the on Air Rigs um, the propagation was not the greatest but uh, yeah it sounds pretty good and then we're going to test it on transmit as well and uh, yeah anyway let's have a listen So um, a quick test for the power output, uh, just the way it is right now, a 12 volt, I'm getting about 650 milliwatts, nearly 700 milliwatts, 
but I'm going to uh, talk in just a little bit uh, about how you can actually increase that power uh, to about 700, 750 milliwatts. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. I mean, if I get uh, at least 500 milliwatts with 9 volts, in, I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. And uh, I do, actually. <laughs> All right, so uh, if I turn up the volume a little bit on the receiver, you can actually hear the the side tone of the of the Pititico. Uh, of course, this is just because it's really close to the receiver. If you're actually on air, uh, far away, you won't hear the the oscillator sound. But uh, here's the tone. Sounds really nice, I like it, and it has no chirp, so I'm pretty happy about the way it turned out. Okay, a few more details and I'm done. <laughs> um, so if you want to increase the power just a tiny little bit, uh, you can replace R2, it's just uh, a 10 ohms resistor, but uh, you can replace it with a 0.5 watt or maybe a 1 watt resistor and your power output will increase with about 10 to 30 um, milliwatts depending on the transistor that you're using as well and also the capacitors i am using tiny ones but uh, if you're using bigger ones uh, bigger ones in size not in capacity uh, the value will stay the same it's just the size of the capacitor usually will also help you get a little bit uh, more power output um, I'm talking about 10 milliwatts, 20 milliwatts, but you know, it matters. And also uh, making sure that the filter, the, the bandpass filter or the low pass filter, depending which option you, you decide, um, it will, uh, you have to, you know, squeeze the, the turns or spread them um, on the on the toroid until you get the maximum power output. And uh, I guess that's it. Oh, one more thing. Uh, in the original design, you had no uh, capacitor here uh, between the crystal and ground. I've added this uh, trimmer capacitor just because it helps me uh, with a frequency offset. So um, I noticed that uh, sometimes the frequency offset is not properly adjusted and uh, with the help of this one i can actually do it you can replace it with a fixed capacitor uh, if you want um, i think the the proper value for me that worked for most uh, bands that i tried uh, the, the pttico it was a uh, about 45 picofarad so i guess a 47 picofarad uh, fixed capacitor will do the job as well but uh, with a variable capacitor, a trimmer capacitor is better just because uh, um, you can actually play around a little bit with the transmit frequency. Uh, for example, um, in most simple CW transceivers, uh, you have a frequency offset on, on receive, not on transmit. So um, basically when you start receiving, um, your frequency offset will go um, higher or lower, I, I don't know exactly, I can't remember, with about 800 hertz. On this one, um, the receive frequency will be uh, the crystal frequency and then the transmit frequency It's about 800 hertz uh, lower. So in order to um, make adjustments and make sure that it's actually transmitting on uh, 7020, in my case, with the, with the crystal that I have, I will have to adjust it from uh, the trimmer capacitor until the transmit frequency is 7020 and then the receive frequency will be somewhere about uh, 7028 or something like that um, or sometimes 703 uh, uh, sorry 7021 um, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, what I like to do usually is to connect um, the PTTCO into a dummy load and also my true SDX into another dummy load and transmit with both of them and I will adjust uh, with a, with a, a true SDX 
uh, through SDX <laughs> transceiver fixed on uh, 7020 and I will transmit with both of them until I can hear the PTT go very well into the true SDX on that particular frequency and then I can also hear the true SDX on the PTT go. But it's important that both of them are on the uh, dummy load just because uh, uh, the antenna will have an influence on, on the frequency offset. So uh, yeah, it's important that you have both of them on dummy load. And I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, there's not much uh, else to say about it. Uh, have fun, enjoy it and uh, I hope you like it. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, until next video, 73, and uh, have an amazing weekend.